I would put music and some audio cues in this intro. Some of you requested this video, and it took me long enough to actually do it. So here we go. If there's anything unfortunate about the legacy, or rather what's most disappointing about Fate Stay Night's legacy, isn't so much that a majority of modern Fate fans tend to be anime only. Lord knows there isn't strictly a bad way to get into the franchise, despite the apparent complexity. Understanding the franchise, however, is its own can of worms, but that's a whole different topic. What's disappointing is, despite the series being more well known than it has ever been before the Fate Zero anime, Fate Grand Order making headlines as being the most talked about game on Twitter in 2018, and raking in over a billion in revenue for Type Moon Nanoplex, despite the multiple anime titles, manga, spin offs, games, and merchandise that can split your wallet well in half just from buying a Saber Nendoroid, this thing cost me 90 bucks with tax. Despite how much traction and praise the franchise has made since 2004, and how it impacted the entire Nasuverse itself to the point where Tsukihime Remake is nowhere to be found, when you try to look up where to buy Fate Stay Night on any digital storefront that sells visual novels, you just can't find it anywhere. In an age where both Higarashi and Umineko no Naku Koroni, the Grisaya series, Corpse Party, Saya no Uta, Steins Gate, Chaos Child, Clanad, Muv Love, Chodengeki Striker, If My Heart Had Wings, Motherfucking School Days, and the numerous upon and ever mounting numerous of visual novels on Steam that have official localizations and releases in the West complete with English text, Fate Stay Night regardless of its age and reverence as being one of the greatest visual novels ever made, remains as one of those to never receive the same treatment. While it's true that the Fate series has never gotten the same popularity as, say, a Sword Art Online, Boku no Hero Academia, or an Attack on Titan as being an anime that managed to break itself onto the mainstream in some capacity, Lord knows Fate has never been on Toonami for some reason, it's still a well-known property within the confines of the anime sphere, so the fact that said audience isn't able to officially experience the franchise's very beginning, by buying it on Steam or something is just a disservice to anyone who even dares to untangle the spaghetti that is this very franchise. Besides outright piracy, getting an official copy of Fate Stay Night can cost you well over $100 or even multiple hundreds in some instances on eBay, and that's not even talking about getting the thing capable of running on non-Japanese windows and translated for non-Japanese speaking folks like me. Type Moon or even Anaplex, who published Fate Grand Order for the West haven't even so much as entertained the idea of finally localizing the original Fate Stay Night visual novel, or even Fate Hollow Ataraxia, its sequel, on an official capacity on any platform, from PC to the PlayStation Vita, leaving the heavy lifting to the community and its modding scene. Type Moon has always had the graces of its cult fanbase, which encompasses even their works beyond Fate. From Kara no Kyokai, Tsukihime, to Maho Tsukai no Yoru, which isn't even fully translated as of the making of this video and according to Kat, a collaborator on my Fate Stay Night review series last year and who has a foot in the activities of the Type Moon community, is most likely dead in the water as far as translation projects go. Beast Slayer is the most notable place to find your fill of everything Type Moon, with countless discussions and developments happening on a daily basis and is where the modding scene helps to keep Fate Stay Night's origin alive and well but the actual translation for the novel stems from the Mirror Moon fan translation group. But both have been around before I even knew Fate Stay Night even existed. In this video, I will go through both the original and real Tanua versions of Fate Stay Night, and the methods of installing and patching them, as well as provide the links to what I used to do all of this. If you want to cut the added fluff and get to the most effective methods of installing Fate Stay Night through real Tanua, go to the timestamp listed on the video now to do so, whenever that'll be. There are multiple ways of getting this thing playable and readable, and considering the modding scene, there's bound to be more in the future somehow. I think it's safe to say the original 2004 release of Fate Stay Night is basically abandonware in the eyes of the visual novel's fanbase, no longer being the main version since the PC release of Real Tanua, the all-ages version of Fate Stay Night, and being fairly obscure to actually find a download of it that's actually good. That being said, it exists, and I guess you could read it, though, let me tell you, it's not exactly good. Procuring your own copy of Fate Stay Night 2004 is up to you. I can't exactly condone piracy in this video, 
even if piracy is how most people get the thing anyway. Although I, admittedly, had to resort to piracy to read Fate Stay Night at all. Good goddamn do I wish I could own a physical copy, especially the 10th anniversary edition that includes Hollow Ataraxia, which costs more than what I get in a single paycheck at my part-time job. Since I don't own it physically, I can't say for sure what the process of installing Fate 2004 is truly like, and if it requires any additional crack or a locale emulator. The most common way to getting Fate 2004 is through downloading it anyhow, and I managed to find a download of it, albeit a somewhat obscure torrent of it that I won't link. It came with three separate RAR files containing a combination of Q, bin, and other CD image files that required the use of Win CDMU, a free disk mounting software that emulates the functions of a normal optical drive. After extracting the contents of each RAR file, I proceeded to mount what I could mount, going as far as mounting the first two bin files during the installation. That all came to a screeching halt, however when it came to the third part, where each file I would try to mount and finish the installation with would essentially come off as either corrupted or unable to be used by the software at all. This was a major brick wall in the progress of installing this particular download of Fate 2004, and I resorted to trying different things, up to including extracting the files in the disk images themselves and seeing if I can mount those but alas, no progress was made. I then determined that this installation would go no further and from there, my task of installing and patching Fate 2004 came to an end, never going past the install phase. There's bound to be different ways of getting Fate 2004 online that aren't corrupted like mine was, but from listings being taken down over the years or files being hosted on unreliable servers, this version of Fate Stay Night is clearly not the way to go. The modern method of running Fate Stay Night is to resort to using the real to Nua PC release which, if we're being honest, is considered the de facto default version of the novel nowadays, with all its censorship changes and omissions. The biggest difference between Fate 2004 and this version besides the aforementioned censorship is the fact that all three routes, Fate, Unlimited Blade Works, and Heavensfeel, are now separate branches, no longer being a part of the same novel but being their own executables. It's impossible to connect the routes under the same roof without a mod. I'll get to how you can change this, but I'll go through the basic way of getting this thing to run in English. Do be warned that when it comes to making Real Tenua playable on a non-Japanese machine, especially if you go with the pirated option, you may need a crack regardless, though don't quote me on that. As alluded to before, I don't actually know about the experience of installing a physical version of Real Tenua. I uh, just wanted to insert this little update to say that there was never a physical edition of the Real Tenua release for PC. They were all digital downloads, one route at a time. Good lord, I'm a fucking moron. As trying to play it straight from the executable will prompt you to enter a key linked to an internet connected server. Suffice to say, the majority of people who experience Real Tenua go through the other option, requiring you to use a crack that you can't just find anywhere. As I said before, I don't nor can I actually say I condone piracy if you can help it, but in this case, there isn't much you can do about it without an official English release. I reiterate this so I can let you know that how one typically obtains Real Tenua and or the cracks needed to run it will require a torrent application. Without naming the site, you will want to find Fate Stay Night Real Tenua for Windows and to see if it contains the cracks for each of the three routes in RAR files. You then have to extract the folders containing the routes onto your computer somewhere. You then extract each respective crack into the folders of their respective routes. The Fate crack goes into the Fate folder where the main Fate route executable is, for example. However, this is not the end of it. If you try to play the novel using the cracked executables as they are by default, you'll get an error message and the novel won't start. That's because the novel is expecting your computer to be running Japanese windows and, in turn, is expecting Japanese letters or characters to be available. And since I'm not using Japanese windows or have a Japanese language pack installed, it rejects any of the routes from being played. As it turns out, this slash between fate and stay is actually a Japanese language character and needs to be deleted from both the folder names and the cracked executables. However, you're not out of the woods doing even this because if you try to start without using a locale emulator, the game will be unable to find Japanese language characters and will crash anyway. To fix this, 
you will need an English translation patch. To get an English translation for Realta Nua, all you have to do is search Realta Nua English patch in Google or read the description of this video and you'll find a link to a Tumblr page that features a download for the translation. Once it's downloaded, open the RAR file with whatever you have, whether you're using WinRAR or 7-zip, and you'll find this folder. To install the English patches, go to the documents folder on your computer and extract this folder into there. As not only does it have the English patch, this folder it will also double as your save folder. Boot up any of the routes, and congratulations, you can now have Realtanua running in English in the most basic way possible. And also the worst way. On October 2013, the Fate Stay Night Real Tanua PC version Mirror Moon Translation Insertion Project was released, which not only translated Real Tanua into English, but added in new translations to previously untranslated text, new visual and sound effects, and added customization options such as the ability to implement the openings and soundtrack from the Vita version, and the ability to reinstate the original 2004 releases mature and sexual content previously omitted in either mosaic censored or uncensored forms, making this the best way of patching real to Nua, at least until earlier this year. To install this version, do what you did for the basic option, but don't download the previous English translation patch. Instead, you will want to go to the Beast Slayer forum thread in the description, and find the associated Google Drive download page. The patches all come at about 1.2 gigabytes, and once it's downloaded, you'll want to open the downloaded RAR file and you'll see numerous folders containing the different patches you will need. Find the fate realtanua underscore save data folder in your documents. If it's not there, you will need to create the folder manually, that or drag this folder in the RAR file into your documents and bam, there you go, you got that. It's right there. Once you either ensure you have or create the folder, it's time to add the patches. How you want to customize Real Tanua is up to you. If you want the sexual content to be an option, have at it. If you want the Vita soundtrack, you do you. Basically, just extract what you want into the save folder and you've essentially patched the novel. Once you have everything you want or need, boot up any of the routes and you're finally good to go. For the longest time, this was the definitive method of experiencing Fate Stay Night, as this mod allowed you to tailor it however you wished, with updated translations and other neat additions on top. However, it still didn't change the fact that the three story routes were separate branches instead of being all in one like the original 2004 release. That was, until earlier this year as I previously stated, when the modders at Beast Slayer finally gave us the Ultimate Edition. Released in February 2019, Real to Nua Ultimate Edition is what it says it is. I actually knew that this was being developed ahead of time, thanks to Cat. What I didn't know was that it was available for months now, with no one telling me of the news until recently on Twitter. In a way, the Ultimate Edition and me finding out that it had been released this entire time is why this video exists. Ultimate Edition basically offers everything the previous mod did, but more. Implementing not only an HD mod that increases the novel's resolution and adds higher quality art assets from the Japanese mobile version, but also widescreen support, no longer needing to be stuck in the original 4x3 aspect ratio. Among other additional functionality, such as being able to skip back to previous dialogue scenes. This is basically the closest we'll get to a Fate Stay Night remake. And considering Type Moon haven't even finished their remake for Tsukihime, Lord knows that'll never happen. The method to install the Ultimate Edition mod is to do what you would do in Real Tanua Part 1 up until needing to install an English patch. Instead, go to the Ultimate Edition thread in the description and you'll find installers for either 32-bit or 64-bit windows. Choose which one fits your Windows installation and download your chosen installer. Run the installer, and if Windows says it's suspicious, don't worry, it's safe. Just ignore it. Go through the installation casually and choose what patches you wish to get before clicking next. After that, the installer will ask where the three routes are located on your computer. 
If you have each folder in a different location than it expects, simply browse and link each respective route folder. Link Fate, Link Unlimited Blade Works, Link Heavensfeel. Once all three routes are linked together, continue with the installer and it'll start downloading and installing the patches you wanted, as well as merge all three routes into one package. This process will partly depend on your internet connection, but regardless, It'll take a while. Eventually, the installer will finish doing its thing, and instead of the three routes being separate executables, you'll only have one. Fire this baby up, and congratulations! You now have the best way of experiencing Fate Stay Night. Without an official Western release by Type Moon on any platform, the fact that we have to rely on mods and piracy is quite possibly the biggest slight against what is otherwise a visual novel worthy of its pedigree. Because not only does it deprive curious newcomers of an easy method of experiencing where this now multi-billion dollar Japanese franchise started, it deprives us pre-existing fans from further supporting the novel we love. Fate's Day Night is a journey, approximately 800,000 words of slice of life, drama, comedy, romance, and thriller, and the meaning of it all so detailed not even the anime adaptations can truly capture it due to the limitations of the medium. I've already made an entire series reviewing the visual novel, but from the Fate Route's exploration of idealism through the troubled relationship between Shiro and Saber and their arcs of empowering each other against their own troubled selves and their opposition, to the moral development of Rin and the argumentative direction of exploring Shiro's ideals in Unlimited Blade Works, to the darkness, twists, turns, and the sheer reality of Shiro's idealism coming to light in a scenario where it just doesn't work. Fate Stay Night and its stories offer something special for those who truly decide to commit to it. And I mean commit. Those who completely read Fate Stay Night from beginning to end, more often than not, come out of it fulfilled in some way, turning into fans of this franchise, if not the entire entire Nasuverse as a whole, willing to explore more, like a brain slug that crawls into your brain. The achievement of successfully navigating this daunting task and the feeling of it is so hard to describe with words alone. It really is one of those things that needs to be experienced for yourself to truly understand, but only if you commit. As you enter a new world with characters you know so personally as to enter their very mind. 800,000 words, give or take, is needed for this adventure. And not everything is pretty. But if 800,000 words is all that gets in the way of that feeling. That feeling of entering a new world and coming out of it from the other side. And having this new experience on your mind. If I could experience Fate Stay Night for the first time all over again, I would happily do it. Seriously, Type Moon, what the fuck? <laughs>